So this is the kind of thing in which a state government can undermine and sabotage an entire peace process which affects the whole country. That's right. So therefore I say it's a constitutional crisis. Sure. And I don't see uh, anyone trying to apply their mind uh, to solve it. Right. Just to divert the issue a little bit, uh, one sees similar uh, conflicts, standoffs, constitutional crises, as you put it, uh, resulting from unilateral actions by one side or the other, like in this case, the Manipur government. In some other case, there's a road blockade. We've seen this happening in the Gorkha movement in the hills where Kishing was denied entry. Uh, we've seen this flaring up in Telangana where pro-United Andhra people are said, we will extern you from the Telangana region or from Hyderabad. Yeah. People or movements, or is it a sign of a growing breakdown of uh, the constitutional arrangements, or is it just a sign of the increasing chaos that we in India seem to be becoming familiar with? I think it is, uh, as a lawyer, as a person, you know, I can only see it in a constitutional framework. I think that when India became independent, there were 552 units, and Sadar Patel reduced them, you know, within a very short time to 15 states. Now, that was purely administrative convenience. But ever since then, now we have almost 29 states. So obviously, there is something wrong with the political arrangements. And I think we have not even had a debate. In fact, even to raise these issues is supposed to be anti-national. And of course, when it happens in the northeast or on our border areas, it's a very serious problem. But it's happening everywhere. In fact, uh, I think there's a book called Federal India in which... Uh, uh, he said there are going to be demands for 58 states within right. India. Right. So, you know, Rashiduddin Khan's That's book. Right. Right. So, they, I think we need to raise the issue of, you know, uh, defining these borders within our country. And I think it's a very important constitutional political question which has to be raised. And we had a Pucci commission going into center state states. It submitted its report. It has made no impact on, on the civil society. There is no, there are no debates. It sure. get drowned. Sure. Sure. So I think that's how I would look upon this. Sure. So you don't think the issue of the methods and the tactics evolved really requires to be addressed separately from the substantive issues themselves? Well, the tactics of the movements, I don't think that a uh, armed group like NSN can work out difficult constitutional questions. They're not equipped. I mean, they've, you know, they only know about armed struggle. The fact that they've entered into talks and have patiently been talking for 70 rounds itself, I think, shows a certain degree of commitment. Right. But I do not think that they have the skills. You know, this requires some commitment from the Indians to address these questions. And we don't have a policy for Northeast. We have a counterinsurgency policy of Northeast, but we don't have really a vision for the Northeast. I, mean, I don't think we have a vision for this country anymore. Right. Because so. this problem is not, in this case, there is a unique set of circumstances, but similar problems we are seeing uh, all over the country. Uh, but in this overall context, this is, after all, the longest st uh, standing separatist movement in the country. Uh, now we have engaged see these talks progressing. Where do you see them headed? How do you, what is your prognosis? I don't think that there are going to be easy solutions. I think that this present, uh, it's a revolutionary leadership. It has a certain background. Mr. Moiva himself has, you know, what, whether we agree on the politics or not, but he's a trained revolutionary in the days of Mao. The next generation is not uh, at all um, trained, and the next one after that, a lot of them are trained in Pakistan, they're just trained in arms, there is no political ideology. So therefore, you will get again a situation like in Kashmir, in which you try and break up the main group, and you have lots of little, little groups with very sophisticated arms, and then you can't negotiate with anybody, so you can't find a solution. And that, I think, is a very dangerous situation. Do you 